Today from the Oosterhout Free Library have the happy ending of Encanto. Disney's Encanto was adapted by Angela Cervantes, published by Random House. I'm Miss Melissa, and we're going to follow the butterflies. Now, Disney put a lot of effort into making sure that Encanto reflected the culture and landscape of Colombia, so I wasn't surprised to learn that it has more butterflies than most places. At the end of the story, we'll follow those butterflies to some fascinating information. Now, we're hearing some more of Abuela's vision, why it was so hard for her to deal with her family sometimes. As time went by and her children grew up, her grip on the family tightened, and so did her demands and expectations. Each member of the family had to make the madrigals proud. They had to earn the miracle. Each time grandchildren were born and each of them received a gift, except Maribel. After that night, when the door faded from Maribel, Abuela began to shun her. Then the crack showed up, threatening everything Abuela had promised Pedro. Their home, their beautiful and spirited casita, was now a pile of rubble, the family bickering and splintering. Abuela could do nothing but hold tight to her ring of keys. She felt as though she had failed. Abuela's voice brought Maribel back to the present, where they gazed out across the river. I was given a miracle, a second chance, and I was so afraid to lose it that I lost sight of who his sacrifice was for, Abuela said with a defeated look. If Pedro could see me now, he would be so disappointed. She looked at Maribel. You never hurt our family, Maribel. We are broken because of me. As the words poured out, Abuela seemed shocked to have admitted it out loud. Maribel looked up at Abuela, understanding why she had been so hard and so strong for so long. She had been through so much. She had fled her home, lost her husband, and raised three children by herself. After everything she had experienced, Abuela thought she had to protect the family. As they sat there, a butterfly fluttered onto a reed in the middle of the river. Maribel stared at it, transfixed. Where had she seen that butterfly before? The vision. Bruno had said to follow the butterfly. Maribel had an idea. She took off her shoes and then unfastened the Bella's shoes as well. Holding hands, they waded out into the water together. Long ago, Maribel said, you and Abuelo had to flee your home. They walked deeper into the water. You carried so much for so long because there's nothing you care about more than our family. We were saved because of you and there's no burden you ever need carry by yourself again because whatever comes our way, we will carry it with you. As Abuela let Maribel's words soak in, her heart opened. Suddenly the sun peeked through the clouds, illuminating the river. Abuela looked at Maribel in awe. She saw her clearly for the first time. I asked my Pedro for help. Maribel, he sent me you, she said, oozing love and pride. She gently touched Maribel's face. As Abuela embraced Maribel, the water swirled and hundreds of butterflies rose up, fluttering about. Maribel and her Abuela watched them with tears streaming down their faces. As they held hands and returned to the river bank, a loud commotion approached from the trees. She didn't do this! Bruno yelled from atop a horse. He jumped down and confronted Abuela. I gave her a vision. It was me. I was like, go! And she was like, no! She only wanted to help, he stammered breathlessly. I, I don't care what you think of me, but if you're too stubborn to... Abuela silenced him with a long, loving embrace. Brunito, she said softly. Bruno gazed at Maribel, confused. I feel like I've missed something important, he said. Come on, Maribel exclaimed, jumping on the horse. She helped the abuela up, then Bruno. What's happening? Where are we going? Bruno asked. Home, Maribel said. They raced off, following the trail of butterflies back to the Encanto. Back at the ruins, a casito darkness loomed over the land. The family and townspeople could do nothing but sit in shock at the destruction surrounding them. Maribel's family were slumped over, dejected and unsure of what to do next. Their powers were gone. The house had collapsed. 
the whole town was crumbling, and Abuela and Maribel were nowhere to be found. Little Antonio, sitting on his mom's shoulder, noticed a sparkling light. He tapped his mom gently and pointed to the immense light heading straight for them. Peppa looked up. It was Maribel, riding a horse with Abuela clinging tight to her. Tio Bruno was there, too. Behind them, a swarm of butterflies fluttered in a brilliant and magical light that pushed back the darkness. The family was stunned by the sight. The townspeople watched, awestruck. Maribel skidded to a stop in front of the ruined house. For a second, she was taken aback by the damage, but she didn't let it shake her. Maribel, her mom exclaimed. She grasped Maribel in an embrace, relieved that her daughter was safe. I, me amor, I was so worried. Mama, we're going to be okay, Maribel insisted. Maribel's family gathered around her. She began to share what she'd seen and witnessed near the river. Abuela joined in, bringing Tio Bruno into the family once more. The family could hardly believe it. Bruno was back, and they were not afraid. They'd actually missed him so much. All their stories about him. They had forgotten how soft-spoken and kind and creative he was. One by one, each of them shared their sincere feelings, their fears, and their desires. For the first time, they revealed their true selves. For so long, they hadn't really seen each other, but now their eyes were opened. They started to pick up the rubble around them piece by piece. The townspeople stepped forward, uncertain but wanting to help. The madrigals quickly welcomed the help as they began to put Casita back together, one stone, one wall, and one door at a time. Hansa Mariano rushed to Dolores' side and helped her. She smiled at him with a twinkle in her eye, and as the family and townspeople worked through the night, the rubble began to look like Casita once again. Once they were done, Maribel and her family stood in front of their home to inspect their work. People started lighting candles, admiring the house in front of them. It was almost complete. There was just one thing missing. Abuela handed Maribel a final piece, a doorknob. Maribel stood in front of the doorway, catching her reflection in the doorknob she held in her hand. She placed the doorknob in the door and whoosh! The house stirred back to life. Butterflies raced over the Encanto in a stream of twinkling lights. As the family's powers were restored, Maribel stood in front of the house. She smiled. Bruno's vision had come to pass. The house waved at Maribel, and Maribel waved back. Hola, Casita! Magic returned to the Encanto, and the sun rose brightly over the Encanto once again. Abuela and Maribel placed the candle back in the courtyard, where its magical glow pulsed brighter than ever, and it continued to remind the family not only the sacrifice made for them, but the fact that they shone because of their own worth not because of their gifts. The family welcomed Tio Bruno with open arms and he never had to eat dinner alone again. And the Rat Theater's stories of forbidden love were hit with everyone. Luisa continued to work hard, but she also took me time whenever she wanted it. Isabella was now Senorita Perfecta of the most imperfect, wildest plants in town. And Dolores married the love of her life, the Hansa Mariano. Their wedding ceremony was celebrated by the whole town. As for Maribel, one day the family playfully blindfolded her for a special surprise. They chatted and laughed as they guided her through the house and to her bedroom door. When the family pulled the blindfold from Maribel's eyes, she smiled from ear to ear. Each member of her family had decorated her door with something that reflected their own special gift. It was made from magic and glowed with love her very own special door. Later in town, Maribel played her accordion and shared the story of the miracle and the magical gifts with the children, and the children listened intently. A lot of people ask me about my family, and I always tell them the same thing. Our family is exactly like your family. Was everyone really blessed with a magical gift? Maribel continued. Well, Sometimes our gifts are harder to see than others. Sometimes our gifts are different than you might think. 
And sometimes if you look really close and if you open your eyes, you just might find you'll never have one. Maribel said, no, wait, you never needed one. You get the idea. Then poof, a new family portrait was taken. In it, everyone posed with their goofiest face. And the best part was hung on the family wall. Maribel was no longer unseen. She was right in the middle of the family portrait where she belonged. That's the end of Encanto. I'll be back with another book soon. And now I have some fascinating information about the butterflies of Colombia. I hope you enjoyed Encanto.